We're seeing the Solana network fairly congested from a user transaction perspective. Now, the core of the network, the actual consensus layer, totally fine, not impacted at all. But you know, from a user experience perspective, the network is nowhere near where we sort of hope and expect it to be. It's running at about seven, 700 transactions per second now, um, you know, which is still pretty commendable even in the sort of degraded state the network is in now. But you know, th these are sort of situations where there's a lot of work that still is being done on the Solana Core protocol. And so one of the components here that you know, there was a known uh, you know, a bottleneck, let's call it that way, in it, um, is in the networking stack implementation with one specific component in that. And you know, it was on the roadmap for uh, developers to address and fix, but the estimation between what the demand for Solana would be versus when this thing needed to be upgraded and fixed, uh, those, those things did not line up. And so the charitable view of this is a failure of success. Mm -hmm. There's huge demand for the Solana block space. There's huge demand for the network. It's processing more transactions than all the Ethereum layer ones and layer twos combined. The less charitable read is it's a failure of planning. And, and both are fair ways to look at it. That, you know, at this point, a lot of the developers on Solana should have been able to anticipate these sort of demand spiked based on the past usage of the network. But demand is not the worst problem to have. How difficult is it to address um, a lot of the criticisms on social media in particular? Because it's, it, it's pretty wild up there. Yeah, you know, I mean, one of the great things about crypto Twitter is anyone anywhere in the world can have ideas. And one of the problems with crypto Twitter is anyone anywhere in the world can have ideas. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think what we see is a lot of uh, good faith engagement around, you know, how people can improve the ability to land transactions, especially from developers and users on the Solana network. There's also some bad actors as well who are intentionally spreading misinformation. Um, you know, th but this is nothing new for crypto Twitter. This is nothing new for this ecosystem. Entrenched financial incentives are one of the greatest parts of this industry, but it also can create lots of uh, incentives for people to spread false information as well. Solana has had outages in the past and a lot yes. has been made of that. Uh, you're not the only blockchain protocol that has that problem, right? I mean, we are not. Bitcoin maximalists and those sort of things will, will take big shots at uh, these protocols for having these problems. Um, do you think that it's, it's okay that there are outages in these different protocols? So I think we're still in the growth phase for all of these networks, right? I think we have to remind ourselves that Amazon Web Services went down for years in the beginning. Uh, you know, traditional financial markets have outages every day called trading hours, right? They're, they're online from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and they're offline the other times. And so, you know, crypto is being graded on a different scale. And I think it's, it's, it's appropriate to be upset about downtimes and outages. The goal is 100% uh, uptime. That should be the goal for the whole industry. Uh, if that comes at the expense of no scale, that's not necessarily, I think, the best, the best trade-off to make. Um, the vision of this entire space is to help disrupt the global financial industry as it exists today, to build more fair economic structures, to build more fair economies, to make it so anyone anywhere in the world can make a living and transact freely and openly. That goal, I think, is worth a little bit of downtime sometime to be pushing the balance of what's possible. And that downtime is not limited to Solana. As, as you said, you know, every major L2 has had downtime and outages as well. Many other L1s have faced the same problems. That's not to excuse them. It's not to say they're okay, but it is to say that, you know, as, as an industry, we are still very much in the, in the development and growth phase. And there's a reason there's a beta tag still attached to Solana. The beta tag is honest. The network today does not represent the final form of what, you know, developers hope the network will be in the future. And there might be other networks that probably should also append a beta tag to them. Meme coins have obviously been grazing on Solana as well. How does the Solana Foundation feel about meme coins? You know, uh, people ask me this question a lot. The foundation doesn't really have an opinion on the activity that takes place on the network. There is no good or bad type of application on Solana. Um, you know, our goal at the foundation is to, to help the advancement of the security, decentralization, and adoption of the Solana blockchain. And meme coins are, you know, a lot of adoption. Um, they are a stress test of the network with very low risk also. So there's a lot of good things that come out of meme coins using the network. There's one meme coin that recently launched that had a new type of transaction that, you know, really stressed a bunch of the of Solana network. And that's part of where some of the congestion we're seeing today comes from. 
the same way that inscriptions, you know, tested Bitcoin and, you know, they, they found some bugs in Bitcoin as part of that. And that's really helped push the development of, of uh, stacks and Bitcoin L2s forward as well. So, you know, meme coins are a really good way to stress test networks. And yeah, uh, I mean, you mentioned that it did lead to some of this congestion. How much can you actually do about that? I mean, uh, from a development perspective, when, when you're getting these surges in yeah. activity. So what the Web2 people will say is just start blocking stuff. We know how to do this all the time. It's a big button in Cloudflare that says under attack, block a bunch of connections. We, we don't want that either, right? So that, that is not the blockchain way. And so, you know, there are solutions that are sort of very quick and dirty solutions, like just raise fees on the network. But raising fees on the network is sort of the last resort. Um, there, there are a lot of systems like stake weighted quality of service that can be used to help filter out transactions that are more valuable or less valuable or less reputable or more reputable. And so raising fees, you know, creates bad user experiences. It creates multi-dollar transaction fees. It creates limited transaction per second capacity um, in a lot of areas too. And so, you know, from, from our perspective at the foundation, and to be clear, we do not run the network. It really is up to the validators and developers to decide what direction they want to take this in the future. But there are better tools and technologies to start addressing spam and congestion before fee discrimination. Fee discrimination is a great fallback and you know Solana has local fee markets that are, are getting built up more robustly so they can better handle that sort of fee discrimination. But that is really the last resort, I think. Kind of brings me to the next point, censorship. I remember a few years ago writing a story about uh, people like putting metadata on the Bitcoin blockchain that, you know, contained pornography. And there was some criticisms about yeah. some of the like racist meme coins that came out on Solana. Obviously you have no control about that, but it's it does raise the question like what does the ecosystem do when some really unsavory things are happening? Right. Shame. So the ecosystem has actually done a ton to address this. Um, you know, wallets like Phantom and other leading wallets and backpack, they already block spam NFTs they, that are trying to, you know, send you to a fraudulent website. They hide a bunch of, you know, fake stable coins that pretend to be USDC but aren't actually issued by Circle. And so from that perspective, you know, removing, you know, racist or other types of meme coins from the front end user experience is something that already happens daily in, in crypto and not just on Solana. And so, you know, we think this is best addressed on the user facing side, on the front ends, on these, these interfaces that people use to interact with blockchain. But the core base layer of Solana has to remain permissionless, decentralized and open. And if that means that, you know, people are putting uh, material that I personally object to on the network, that is unfortunate, but it is not something where, you know, the foundation or any other actor in the network has the technical ability to restrict that or should be advocating for that type of restriction. You know, one analogy here is it's like internet service providers. You know, the United States, Verizon, Comcast, AT&T, T-Mobile, these entities are not expected to prevent a phishing email from landing in your inbox. These are understood as being different stacks, different levels of the network. And blockchain at its core, it is base layer neutral communications infrastructure, whatever people want to build on top of it. And so it's really important that it remains that way. There are uh, protocols that are doing airdrops that have said that any wallet that's interacted with these you know, racist meme coins will be ineligible for an airdrop. Economic incentives are really powerful. And so I think that that sort of community control over how they want their users and their tokens to be distributed, that is really powerful. And so, you know, these things don't have to be solved at the base layer. They can be solved above. Austin, thanks very much for your time. Thanks for chatting to us. And uh, we look forward to seeing you at the next conference. Yes, thank you.